Meanwhile, the midterm elections are right around the corner. So Phil Mateer and I asked former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown, what's the election strategy going on here? I think the insiders are referring to the possibility that the Democrats will win one House or possibly two. And if that happens, you can forget whether or not anybody else will get approved. After what the Republicans did to Barack Obama, they will receive the same flavor from the Democrats. That's what the midterm concept is about. But what's the strategy here? Well, I mean, so there's sort of two things happening. Number one, the Democrats would have to take the Senate in order to somehow derail this confirmation. And number two, remember, it's not just Election Day. People don't get sworn in until January. So whatever stalling tactic they need to employ has to literally go t past the end of the year until a whole new crop of people is sworn what in. Is, what, is, well, what, me, effect, what effect does the, would a vote have on the midterm elections? Because I understand there's some about seven Democrats who they say, the Democrats say, they don't want them to be voting on this because the vote could hurt their reelections. And there's Republicans that if they went a different way, the women would rise up and vote them out. So would you... And there's no question. The midterm could have an effect on either of the respective political parties. In addition thereto, there are some Republicans who would be really reluctant if the Democrats won the House or the Senate, even though they're not sworn in till January, to suddenly be cast in a vote that is clearly unacceptable to a majority of the American people. I, that will be a challenge. I could not disagree more. I think they would eagerly jump in and say, we got two months left. Let's get in there and get this guy confirmed before well, we all go get, pack our bags and leave. I don't think they well, would have any compunction you, about moving having, straight ahead. Having been there, mm -hmm. I know that there's a dramatic difference in how I approached the Republicans in the House when I served as Speaker once we had won in November. I went back to them and explained to them what their life would be like if they didn't cooperate. And believe me, I'm certain that Chucky Schumer is going to do exactly that. Quick last question, real quickly, Mayor Brown. Is it in either party's interest to have the vote now? Not really. Not really. Because, Phil, I keep harping on the fact that there has not been one accusation in this country of sexual misbehavior by a man versus a woman where there wasn't more than one incident. Hmm. Now, I would think that delay would be really the enemy of the Republican Party, that what they would want to do is have this hearing and then vote as quickly as they can so that the opposition doesn't get any more ch opportunity to coalesce. And so voter, for voters, even voters who might not be thrilled about the Kavanaugh confirmation, will have it in the rearview mirror. So you want to have whatever dust-up is happening, whatever fiasco this is turning into, be over and done with by the time people are casting those votes. So I, I definitely think they, they want to do this as quickly as possible. They say it's because they want to have them in there for that October session, but uh, that actually, uh, I, I think that there's some electoral politics there going on. And California Senator Dianne Feinstein has found herself in the middle of a whirlwind over her handling of Professor Ford's allegations that were in a letter that were given to the senator. Ford had wanted to remain anonymous. Phil Mateer and I asked former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown what Senator Feinstein should have done. Not really. She should have gone to a good lawyer like Marissa or me or somebody and said, this is a problem potentially because it could be evidence. What do I do? Well, she did go to the judiciary lawyers, right? Uh, she did and had a discussion with them. And I'll point out, back in 1991, Anita Hill first disclosed her allegations to the Judiciary Committee and asked them to keep her name out of it and to keep her allegations confidential, and they did. And that's why there had to be sort of follow-up hearings, because once the news broke, you had to have a hearing later. But she told the committee early on, don't tell anyone. They honored that and, you know, were, you know, also sort of in the crosshairs for doing it back then as well. Diane Feinstein, do you think she deliberately withheld this for political reasons? Well, you... I don't want to speculate on what Diane may or may not have done, but I will answer the question. Believe me, it'll be instructional for anybody else that gets their hands on any evidence. You will do something with that evidence that takes the burden okay. from you for making okay, a call. Okay, so Diane but Feinstein tried to do what was, many people say, is the right of the victim, to remain anonymous. And she was trying to work it through, are you ready to come out? Are you ready to talk? Are you ready to talk? You're saying in the after this, that won't be... A, up an option anymore. It will be, you said it, let's go.
And, and what's that going to mean? What, what I don't understand in all of this is how is it that a victim would think that anybody would keep this information private? You're talking about somebody that's going to go on the Supreme Court at 53 years of age for life. Nobody in his right mind will want that to remain private. But you have to try. You have to act in deference to the wishes of the victim, don't you? Uh, to some degree, yes. And, and we know her, uh, her attorney, uh, Deborah Katz, has come out and said Feinstein's office kept calling and asking, will you, come, will you come forward, will you come forward, will you come forward? So she was definitely pushing uh, this woman to be public. So it doesn't seem like she was necessarily, in, Feinstein was interested in keeping this private for an extended period of time. She was actively encouraging her.